In this room, we, we, we show plans. Um, of course, the way you show plans has a big impact on how you read plans. Uh, for us, plans are very, I would say, simple figures. And very often you could say they are rooms, uh, perimeters, uh, containers of things. And in many ways, uh, we felt also during uh, the conversations we had with Go, and in a way, from what we knew of his work, that is something we share. Perhaps the scale of our perimeters is slightly different from the ones of, of Go, but essentially um, to try to carve out a room or to make a sequence of rooms or to make an interrelationship between a set of rooms and to negotiate exactly on the line between inside and outside, the threshold, um, has been in a way in our office, and we feel also in Go's practice, from the beginning, uh, the key. Now, of course, if you again, you link it with uh, a couple of plans which we selected, I guess what we wanted to do was, was two things. On the one hand, we wanted to show that the way you read perimeters has a lot to do in how you frame perimeters, how you appropriate them. So there's a couple of uh, plans, in fact, two by Palladio. Um, and for example, one notably uh, of the the, yeah, the Rotonda Villa um, has this very clearly drawn rectangle around it so that almost the rectangle, the frame and the plan itself of the Rotonda becomes a new drawing. So all of a sudden you see a, a, in a, way a house without exterior with a set of rooms on the inside. So just simply the framing, the focus on certain things makes you imagine another project. Maybe a project not unlike say the House of the Future of the Smithsons where you have a house without a real outside and only a set of almost bubble-like spaces, devices, objects, which then perhaps brings us to the most extreme of our plans, which is the, the solo house. On the other end of, of the spectrum, you have uh, the, uh, the, the Locomotiva project of, of Rossi, for example, uh, which is the perimeter as, a, as an urban gesture, as, as a way to contain things and let go. So plenty of projects we show here, do again exactly that. But as you can see, we chose only one plan. So uh, you don't get to know when you walk and you study each of these plans, you don't exactly get to know the project. So you start to make families of projects, you start to make references, and you start to see, because we use only a limited set of scales, inner relationships. And it's exactly these relationships between the space, the room, the way you live in these spaces, and the actual architecture itself, and in a way how often the architecture almost disappears uh, in that definition of the perimeter which interests us. We refer also to the, the idea of, let's say, frame and content. And uh, in architecture, you could say this, this abstract notion of frame and contact is, is exactly what we want to show here. Um, uh, our architecture, and also as well the one of, of Go, uh, it, it actually happens at the edge, at the perimeter. And uh, so, really enough, we decided also to frame the plants. Uh, so you see a lot of frames hanging on the wall, but they again show frames containing possible content. And this kind of, let's say, um, uh, depending relation of, let's say, frame and content or parameters around something is uh, for us how you can uh, work in architecture. And it's an endless negotiation with this line, exactly the, the perimeter line, that defines, uh, let's say, how you uh, make uh, or think uh, uh, architecture, how you think the plan. And uh, by exactly bringing in references, uh, the one of uh, Rossi, the one of uh, Palladio, etc. Uh, we, we understood that it's also just showing this notion that can be enough to understand it as a, a series of action that has been going on already for centuries. And uh, the, the plan as the pyramid to become something, again, very abstract, but just by making it even more abstract and not anymore a representation of, let's say, a possible building, uh, the, the plan uh, can uh, get liberated from, let's say, its uh, functional aspect and become uh, a, a parameter on itself. What was important for us is that by combining the plans of Go and the plans of ours, that despite the fact that Go's architecture 
uh, is of a tremendously different scale. Uh, that say, for example, very often showing the goal plans 1 to 50 and a house of ours on 1 to 100, uh, that they start to be comparable. Also, drawing plans is a lot about, uh, I would say, drawing conventions. Um, the plans which are drawn by the office of, of Kohazegawa very often have white outline walls. Uh, we decided to, in a way to, to turn them black, uh, to make them much closer in the way they are drawn to our plans. So all of a sudden, in a way, the sequence of spaces where a border is a real border uh, and an opening is a real opening, and things are in a way less ambiguous about what the performance is of the architecture, uh, we felt uh, made you read uh, these sometimes extremely sophisticated plans of Go in quite a different way. In a way, the figure becomes more readable. Um, the obstruction uh, of very often what the wall does uh, becomes far more apparent. And so, all of a sudden, you see that his uh, search for an architecture on a microscopic level very often uh, and how the sequence between the top room, the bottom room, or the equal rooms uh, with, in a way, entrances from the middle um, is so close to, to how we have been developing uh, enfilade sequences in, in different houses. So, so I was, in general, I mean, the room here for us is, is but one of these incarnations, but where you see that doing the show together, I mean, say, uh, Go Hasegawa and Office, um, implicitly dealing, say, with, with the topic of history, that rather by focusing on the tools of architecture, uh, that we started, first of all, it's very easy, because in the tools of architecture you talk the same language, and while you're talking, let's say, that same language, you start to bring in references on the table. And if you do that, then, I mean, I believe that you see very, very much uh, the parallel trajectory, but if you look more carefully, you start to see, of course, the different focus points. And uh, I think uh, both of us, and, but also the way we talked with Go, it seems also Go it's himself, we're very excited exactly that it's able to show that. I mean, the enormous uh, amount of, I would say, uh, common, um, let's say, shared uh, kind of interest, but that exactly with that, it's about framing certain things and focusing on certain things that you see the differences.